Okay, lastly we have a look at the project template. Now, the template is a Word document and basically what it is, it's a document that helps you complete the project. Okay, so here you can see it's got the CBT logo and then it says a career marketing plan for and then you put your name in, and surname in there by your name and surname and student number and then it has other details and your supervisor and then you need to put in the date and then the declaration you need to include your initial and your surname your student number how much you contributed to the project whether 100 percent or 50 percent and then your signature then there's an executive summary now for each section i explain the document explains what you need to do and what it is okay then it gives an example afterwards so let's have a look an executive summary is literally a summary of what is in the document it is not an introduction rather it is a piece that gives a short summary of what is actually in each section of the document the reader will usually read it first in order to get an overview of what is in the document this will help them decide if they want to read further or not and possibly which sections of the document interest them more it is usually one to two pages in length and it is written once the document has been completed don't write it in the beginning you write it at the end so we will come back to this section at the end okay and here's an example for my life and my yeah right then we have a table of contents this you also complete at the end uh, because only it's only at the end that you know where which page numbers relate to which sections all the sections are already here so all you need to do is change the page numbers for your um, for your document Okay, then we get to the first section, the career plan overview, and let's have a read. <clears throat> the marketing plan helps you develop your personal professional brand, which is the image that you will build as you grow your career. Your brand will allow you to compete effectively in the industry that you plan to work in. As your brand grows, so will your influence and your ability to achieve your goals and ultimately realize your vision. So the first section of the overview is your introduction. In this section, you will introduce yourself as a professional person, this is the type of statement you may put on your Twitter handle or on LinkedIn. Link it to the industry that you plan to work in. And then I give an example. Now, you can use my example just as a reference to understand what you need to put in each section. But you cannot copy mine. I will obviously know if you've copied mine. So you need to, you need to write it for yourself. And obviously, once you've completed yours, you need to delete the example. Okay? So that your document looks good also something that you need to do before you hand in is you need to delete all the sections where I, where the document explains what you need to do so you need to delete all of that you need to delete that and all you need to have there is and you need to delete my example all you need to have there actually is this section that you've written okay so the example says Dylan Cromer is an aspiring educational innovator that wants to make an impact in education in South Africa so there's my name this is the brand it says what I am or what I'm aspiring to be and it talks about the industry okay education industry in South Africa then we move on to promoters and stakeholders now you would have done some of this you would have done this actually already in personal selling where you have to develop a stakeholder matrix okay so I just explain a little bit here a stakeholder is anyone who can make a claim on your attention, resources or output or is affected positively or negatively by our output. Stakeholders can mobilize resources to affect the outcome of your activities in some way. For example, it's yourself, your family, your neighbors, your friends, your teachers, your sponsors, employers, government, etc. So yeah, you need to develop a stakeholder matrix. Matrix. You need to put in your stakeholder, so it's your father, excuse me, your father and my father pays for my studies um pay, pays for uh well let's say yeah my father uh, provides financial resources for my studies okay mother my mother supports me Actually, always encourages me. 
and so you carry on by lecturers, you know, friends, and then you need to name them specifically, and you need to explain the influence, and then you need to kind of list their influence, like who's the major priority. So, my, my you know, my my father is number one, then my mother is also number one priority on the priority list. My friends are like number two or three. My brother and sister are number two. Lecturers are like number also number three. And then you need to list them. Okay. So here you can see I give a very brief example. Parents very positive. They support me and encourage me and provide for me financially. For brother he supports me and encourages me. These are just examples. Okay. So you need to do that. List all of them. You can add more rows by selecting like that, right clicking and saying insert row and so forth. Okay. Then the industry description. Okay, so this is a brief description of the industry that you would like to work in. You will cover it in more detail in the market analysis section, which we don't cover in this document. So I actually need to cover it in detail here because there is not going to be a market analysis section. Okay, so you first describe your industry. Then you, then you explain is it a growth industry, why or why not. What changes do you foresee in the industry in the short term and the long term? And how will you be poised? How will you be positioned to take advantage of those changes? Okay, those are the four things you need to answer. And here you can see my example, describe your industry. Then I explain. The higher education industry in South Africa is made up of both public and private institutions, which facilitate higher learning for the public. There are 23 public universities. So these are things that I could find online. And there I have to give my reference. If you do have something that comes from another source you need to reference it properly okay you need to reference it properly actually this is not properly it should be um, no author South Africa info and later on you need to reference it in your bibliography as well that's very important okay then is it a growth industry why why not higher education is certainly a growth and then I explain if, why it's a growth industry what changes do you foresee in the industry I explain that and lastly how am, am I poised to take advantage of those in, of those opportunities or changes I'm currently working at CPUT, I plan to increase my teaching and learning skills, and so forth. So you need to make sure that these all relate to each other. Okay? Then problem solving. So I explain problem solving. Problem society needs this you will delete eventually. Society needs professional people to do one of two things, solve problems or take advantage of opportunities. That is the reason that companies employ people. As a professional person, you need to become acquainted with problems, the problems and opportunities out there in your industry that companies will need your help solving and taking advantage of. Why are some of the problems or opportunities in your, or sorry, what are some of the problems or opportunities in your industry of interest? And let me just clarify something. It's very important that you realize that marketing is not a specifically an industry in itself. Marketing is, an in, is a type of a service industry. Marketing services all the other industries. So you have marketing that serves pharmaceutical industry. You have marketing that serves the uh, beverage industry. You have marketing that serves the alcohol industry. You have marketing that's, and so on and so forth. So you, you need to choose which industry you would like to work in, whether it's the beverage industry, the automobile industry, the alcohol industry, the fashion industry, etc. Which industry do you want to work in as a marketer? Okay. So it's that industry that you need to talk about. Okay. Then you have to list problems and opportunities within that industry. So yeah, I list some examples in higher education because I use my marketing degree to serve the higher education industry. Okay, so I talk here, yeah, students are not very employable, students are not very entrepreneurial, there are not enough jobs, and so forth and so forth. There's very little little career guidance, there's not enough space in our universities, the cost of education is high, so you see I can list, there's lots, and you can research these online. Then I give a note, as you continue in an industry, you will notice more and more problems that you can help solve, and opportunities that you can help take advantage of. 
look at your industry and think about the needs of the people and businesses that the, the, that industry serves what could be done better how can their needs be more effectively met okay and then you develop a problem statement so once you have determined which problems exist you should write it down in the form of a statement this is known as a problem statement so ask yourself what problem or opportunity have i noticed in the industry that i want to enter and which i believe i can help solve or take advantage of so you need to choose one in a way you need to choose one or two problems that you feel that you're going to focus on okay and yeah and you need to write it in a, in a nice succinct summarized way so here's the example the higher education system in South Africa does not seem to be able to effectively equip young people to be both employable and entrepreneurial at a price they are able to pay in a way that is flexible and works with their 21st century lifestyles. So that's my problem statement. That's the main problem I see in the higher education industry in South Africa. Okay, by summarizing everything I wrote here. Okay. Then we move to the professional people solution. So now that you've got a problem, now the question is, how are you going to solve that? Well, the way we solve these types of problems in organizations is by providing them with people that have specific skills and knowledges. Okay? So you will determine what type of people your chosen industry needs to help solve the stated problem. And then you envision to become this type of person in order that you can serve that industry. So here's an example. The education industry needs people, more people who are thinking outside the box and are willing to try new things in order to redefine how we educate. Also it needs more people who can understand how to use digital technologies in order to educate. And then you can write there, I'll become such a person. So what type of people does your industry need? And what type of, in other words, what type of person are you going to become? Okay, then we move to 1.5 products and services, which is your knowledge and skills. Okay, a company has products and services that, off that it offers to customers, whereas a professional person offers knowledge, offers knowledge and skills. So it's still your quote-unquote products and services, but it's, yeah, it's your knowledge and skills. So in this section, you need to unpack your knowledge, your skills, your abilities, your gifts, your experience, and any other things that can add value to an organization and these are usually things that you would find in a CV so here's the template that you will use you'll write about your background your gift details your qualifications your work experience your skills and abilities your portfolio examples of previous work and then people industry relationships that you might have so yeah I give an example from my life my background I talk about high school some noteworthy details from high school my uh, qualifications, I did a BTEC degree, um, as well as a national diploma, and I talk about some noteworthy details, and I give the dates, I talk about my work experience in the industry as a junior lecturer, and some noteworthy details in the entrepreneurship industry, and I give some details in the advertising industry, I give details, then I talk about my skills and abilities for education, for business, for strategy, and some portfolios, having examples of work uh, at the com that company where I worked there. These are some of the things I, I worked on at this company. These are the, some of the things I worked on. And then lastly, I give some references or referees for the education industry and for business and consulting industry. Okay. So those are, that will give a good, a good overview of, of my products and services, what I can offer. Okay, then we move to 1.6. Now, you might not have as, obviously, you wouldn't have as many um, things that you can put in here because you haven't lived as long as I have, you haven't been working as long as I have, but you'd probably have things from high school and maybe things that you've now started doing um, as a first year university student, and those are the types of things that you would include in here. Okay. Okay, then you get to the customer description. Once you have laid out your products and services, you need to delve a bit deeper into the value you can add to the industry that you plan to enter. But before you do that, you need to first determine more precisely who your customer is. To whom will you market your products or services? You need to describe your customers or clients that, that will be most likely to purchase your product. Okay? When it comes to careers, your customer is going to be the organizations that you will offer your skills and knowledge to. 
In other words, the organizations that would most likely hire you in the, in the industry of your choice. In other words, your potential employers. In, in my example, in higher education, if this would be universities, NGOs that run educational programs, private colleges that offer marketing and business classes, and some examples from, from here would be, from Cape Town would be CPUT, UWC, Damlin, Vega, Red and Yellow, and so forth. Okay, so you need to just give that. What are some of the types of organizations? And then give examples of actual organizations. Okay? Then we move to the SWOT analysis. Once you determine your customer, you need to develop the SWOT analysis. And it's important that you remember, again, that strengths and weaknesses are internal. They have to do with your personal skills and abilities. Whereas opportunities and threats have to do with external things in the marketplace. Okay, for example, an opportunity might be um, a new type of technology that's been developed, which is making that there's more work available for people like you. Or a threat may be that um, there's a lot of competition in your industry for, uh, yeah, okay. A skill or a strength would be something that you can do. You are good at graphic design. Uh, a weakness would be that you are not very good at time management. Okay. So yeah, I explain my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Yeah, I say I'm young and innovative. I'm tech savvy. I'm a fast learner, and I understand the new young learners. Then weaknesses. I have little research experience. I have no teaching qualification. I try to do too many things at the same time. Opportunities to be involved with new innovations in education. There are many around the world. Work in other countries, at other universities, and of course the growth of online learning is a massive opportunity in my industry. Threats, my BE status. Those are the better, better BE status would get employed before me. I do not have a master's yet, which is a very strict requirement from universities. There's a lot of student unrest which means there's less jobs because students are requiring no fee increases, less jobs for lecturers. Okay, so that's a, that's a definite threat. And obviously there's a threat, the student unrest is causing a threat which would, could mean the closure of some universities. All right, then we get to the positioning introduction. Okay, so after you've discussed your SWOT elements, you need to briefly look at your positioning. And you'll cover positioning okay you won't cover it in more detail well you'll cover it in more detail yes in the marketing strategy section so your positioning elements that you first need to look at include the benefits of and features and um, these are things that you currently have your benefits and future um, features these are things that you would like to have in the future your competitive advantage these are advantages you have over your competitors and other people applying for similar jobs then there's your USP, your unique selling proposition. These are things, this is the one thing that makes you stand out from your competitors. Then the disadvantages or weak points and then future developments. Okay, so yeah, I give my example. So this is your template, you fill in your details here. And then I give my example. Okay, benefits and features. Currently, these are things that I'm currently able to do. I can teach a syllabus. I use innovative technologies to make learning flexible and fun. I have a small amount of research experience future what do I want what benefits and features do I want to be able to add in the future I want to be prolific at research I want to be better to better understand how to ensure effective student learning okay my competitive advantage these are advantage this is an advantage I have over my competitors people who might be applying for a similar job okay I'm young and passionate others could be older and not very passionate I'm motivated to solve problems and ensure student success some lecturers don't really care deeply because their students is just a job to them I'm creative, innovative, hardworking, and willing to learn. And then I give, I explain what, what the competitors could be like. Many lecturers do not only do only the bare minimum and are often unwilling to learn and grow. I'm getting a master's in, in a combination of education and marketing. Many lecturers only have a master's in their, in their own discipline. But I will have it in both marketing and education. While I'll have, yeah. I have lots of industry experience. Some lecturers have no industry experience. I have a good grasp of doing education via technology and developing projects that will help students effectively apply their knowledge. Many lecturers struggle, and then I explain the competitors. 
Okay, so you need to do the same for yourself and compare it to your competitors. My unique side, now remember, unique selling proposition is just one thing. And you need to think very carefully. If you say the same as me, I'm going to be reluctant to give you marks here. Because you need to think about what is it that makes you unique. Okay? What is it that makes you unique? Stand out from your competitors. The very, only one thing. Okay, then disadvantages or weak points. I have little research experience. I'm not passionate about research. I have a low BE status. I have no masters and I have no education qualification. These are definite disadvantages. Then future developments. Often your future developments are things that would, you would want to develop to overcome your disadvantages. So here we go. I get a masters. I get a teaching and learning qualification. I do research articles to improve my research. Alright, 